I was lent this little setup today. This is an Agfa Select Bright Line from about 1960. Uh, I've reviewed my own uh, Agfa Select, which is a slightly different model, uh, but what I particularly liked about this was the accessories that came with it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the camera and then talk about the accessories that you could buy with the camera at the time. So here is a little camera, 35mm camera, uh, 1961 price, this was about £21, which is quite a considerable amount of money for the time. It has a three elements uh, coated Apatar lens, uh, which has a focal length of 45mm, it's got a maximum aperture of f2.8, it takes standard 35mm film, which produces a frame size of 36 by 24mm. The shutter is a 9 speed Pronator uh, shutter, uh, which has goes from uh, 1 300th of a second here through to 1 second plus B. It has a uh, flash sync for, with X and M, M being a flash bulb, X being an electronic flash, and the V here is for the self timer. I'll turn the camera over, you can see I have a wind on here, and a release, I have a cold shoe and I have the traditional do nothing button that has got a, a dial to remind me what film I've put in. If I open up the back of the camera you can see that the camera film is loaded on this side, it travels across the frame and it takes up here. As I advance this you can see that the counter here also advances. When I get to the end of the film, I have to rewind it using this knob here and releasing the clutch by depressing this button at the back. And it will allow me to rewind. On this camera I have to guess the focus and the focusing scale is in feet on the front dial here. I have an incredibly useful uh, depth of field preview uh, guide here. Then I can rotate the shutter speeds or I can rotate the apertures. If I leave them without pressing this button then they rotate in sync. And really that's kind of it. That's kind of it for this camera. It's a nice little machine. Uh, it's, wow, how old now? 60 odd years. Uh, so uh, it's surprising that any of them are still alive. But they are, and they are capable of great things. With this camera, came a number of accessories and I really like this one. It's a lens hood with a built-in yellow filter. So if I want to increase the contrast of my skies on a panchromatic film, I use the complement of the colour of the sky. The complement of blue is yellow, so this makes the sky a little bit darker. And the lens hood acts to reduce the amount of flare getting into the camera and therefore the amount of contrast in the picture overall. That is a really nice little touch and as you can see it comes with its own little container. Sometimes I don't think we realise how treated we are with modern technology. In the 1960s this was a fairly standard flash gun. When I say flash gun it, it was simply a, a flash bulb holder. So if I lift this up, you can see that there is room for a one-use bulb and this turns around to produce a reflector for it. 
this cable therefore fits into the camera at that point there. The table on the back will give you an indication of the uh, apertures you need for various uh, distances. So if I'm using uh, a 40 ISO film and I'm on three and a half meters, then I should be using an aperture of about f8. Obviously this was a very expensive way of taking pictures because each bulb could only use once and you needed to replace it after that. The last part of the setup for this is a rather nice looking, almost art deco light meter made by Agfa. I won't go into any great detail, um, but I have done uh, a video on the Western meter and this works in exactly the same way. So if you're interested in how a um, selenium barrier cell light meter works, which means it takes no batteries, then have a look at my video on the Western. Nice little kit.